Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and in today's video, sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons, I want to talk about the best six legendary hero investments in the game. These are the heroes that, if you invested in them right away, they've been giving you value the entire time the game has been out, and probably will continue to give you value for a very long time. Now, this just represents my personal opinion, so you can take it with a grain of salt, but I've fought in some pretty brutal seasons, and I've got a lot of experience with all of these heroes firsthand. So let's start at at number six on the list, that's going to be Gorash. Not a coincidence that he's on the screen. He is, in my opinion, at this point, the best infantry hero in the game, and that is because of this skill right over here. When your Legion launches a counterattack, they have a 50% chance to deal additional damage to up to five surrounding legions. Each additional target uh, reduces the damage taken by 15%. It can be triggered up to two times per second and it's 200 damage factor. So the way this works is when Gorash gets swarmed, you're just going to be doing tons of AoE skill damage. It is amazing. I think he is probably the best infantry hero in the game. You could argue that Skogel is obviously a very critical part of this combo, but the reason that Gorash makes the list and Skogel doesn't is that Gorash is a part of good infantry rallies and he's a part of good infantry garrisons. So not only is he the best infantry hero in the game for the field, in my opinion, but he also gets used in rally and garrison, which is disgusting because he's actually a rally hero. And at the time of this recording, the best garrison I think you can muster in a sort of regular season where you can't change a troop type around is going to be Magro primary with a Gorash as the secondary. And the AoE from Gorash just absolutely decimates the multi-rally and also any open fielders that walk near the garrison get just obliterated. So Gorash ends up as your number six and sets a very high bar, which brings us to number five. And number five on this list, remember this is a hero investment sort of value list. If you put sculptures in, or really tokens in this game, how happy will you be down the road? And I've got to say, Hosk is a phenomenal investment in this game. Do I think he is the best hero in the game right now? No. But does he work in a variety of combos? Yes. Has he at different points in time been a part of like rallies? Yes, he has. So if you did an investment in Hosk very early on in your experience in the game, you'll find plenty of use for him. That use is primarily, I would argue, with marksmen, but you can use him with other troop types as well. And I've used him with infantry. I've used him with mages. I've done... Pretty much even cavalry, like I've done it all. So Hosk is valuable in part because he is so universal and in part because you can get him so early if you are a bigger spender in the game. But don't worry, you don't have to be a bigger spender in the game. Let's go to number four on my list. Number four on my list is going to be free-to-play obtainable, and that is actually going to be Velen. Now, the reason I really like Velen who I'm struggling to find on my list for some reason here. Skill issue for sure. Oh my God, bro. Where are you hiding? Wait, actually asking. I like deleted my Velen. Um, Velen is outstanding because he has area of effect damage. Okay. He has a March speed reduction, which is also fine. And he's also a damage enhancer. He gives you March speed bonus, increases a skill damage uh, dealt, and also gives you crit rate. Dude is just awesome, and he's got all of his skills relevant in the open field, which is exactly where you want to be. Is his damage factor insane? No. But is your enemy likely to stack up and you'll get benefit from the AoE? Yeah, yeah, you're going to get a lot of value from that. Now, he's available from gold keys, as I mentioned, which is extremely easy to obtain over time, or... He is available in the daily special, which if I make my way over to the daily special, uh, right over here, I keep getting this pop up that these are new, but I have been here before. Um, yeah, he is, I believe one of the first heroes that sort of shows up in here. Holy smokes, Velen. He is a great pickup if you're spending in the game, and if you are spending, consider using the Farlight Store. I'll have a link in the description. The Farlight Store lets you buy dragon tickets in advance of when you make your purchases, and then all you have to do when you're in-game is exchange a ticket 
or an equivalently priced bundle, and you're off to the races. You also get some bonus dragon coins on top. You can also use coins to make a purchase instead of your tickets. I've covered this in a bunch of other videos, so I won't go in depth here. I will simply say that from an investment standpoint, I will put Velen at number four on my list. Mages also, as it turns out, are extremely valuable. And if you were to have, you know, only one march... I guess I wouldn't say it's necessarily involving Valen. It's probably your second march that's so good. But the other hero that's a part of this march, by the way, is number three on my list, and that's going to be Lilia. Number three, best investment in the game. Lilia is available from VIP. You can max her out extremely cheaply compared to other heroes in this game. And she is so powerful. And look, at the time of this recording, I'm assuming we're getting new mages very soon. Maybe there'll be AoE mages, and that will change the calculus. For me, personally, Bert and Tohar, who I maxed out and put a pretty decent pet onto, never really fulfilled the same level of punch that I got from my Lily Velen, and that's largely because they're doing AoE damage. Um, and also, I did get this artifact, which works incredibly well on the Lilia. Um, the Infernal Flame delivers, and it has been amazing value. But I'm getting on a tangent. The reason Lilia is so outstanding is because of her AoE damage. I think mages are an outstanding march for everybody to have, and to be able to plunk from afar with range damage just is incredibly powerful. With regard to obtaining her, as I mentioned, you'll get her from VIP. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when they add new VIP levels. Presumably that will come once we get sort of a certain critical mass of people at the max level of VIP, I don't know how close we are or are not to that moment, but that's how it's been done in Rise of Kingdoms, uh, made by the makers of this game and uh, and largely uh, sort of a predecessor to this one. But anyways, um, the Honor Exclusive is where you get your Lilia, and I believe it's VIP 9 where that sort of caps out. VIP 10 is once you're going to switch over and start getting Hosk, all right? The downside of Lolia is, if I remember correctly, you can't use universal tokens on her. So you have to buy her, but whew, I mean, yeah, if I were starting all over, I would max Lilia at the very first opportunity and I would not look back. All right. Now, this brings us to two heroes, and I'm going to call them a tie. Technically, they aren't, but they go together, all right? And they're number one and number two best hero investments in Call of Dragons as of, you know, the end of November in 2024. That is going to be Magrat and Zeta. And let me tell you, Magrat and Zeta absolutely a slap. Um, it's just the best merits you can possibly get in the game right now, I believe, is from this march. And it's not by like a little, it's by like a jaw-dropping amount how effective this march is. If I were starting all over, I would fully 100% allocate every bit of my spending towards maximizing how this march performs, which sounds a little bit crazy, but look... I don't know if it's what she's got in that little vial she's holding or the proportion of her hands to the rest of her body, but she delivers. <laughs> she delivers. Magrat and Zeta together are absolutely insane. So even with a suboptimal pet, I'm using a sand lizard because the pet for her only was released recently and I had already maxed this before that came out. Even if you aren't using her bow, which I'm using the rattle spear instead, this still delivered to me the best trades I had by such a large margin. It's honestly kind of jaw-dropping. Just be sure that anytime you're in a season that has long-range warfare, okay, as a season talent option, you take it, and then just honestly, like, roll your face on the keyboard and collect your wins with this march. It is so, 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 so good. The normal attack damage is just incredible, and you get huge amounts of damage just from five normal attacks. So even if you do a little bit of back and forth. You know, normally maybe Lilia and Velen might not have actually had enough rage to use their active skill and get big damage. Magrat is already just decimated an enemy with a 500% damage attack, which is gross. She also keeps herself topped off, which is amazing. She's also, I mean, just, I don't know that I'd necessarily say a top tier garrison per se. I think the infantry are better, but she's just so good. She's just so good and pair with Zeta, right? And that's that's just where it's at. And technically, actually, the bow is more of a Zeta bow. In case you didn't know what I'm talking about, I didn't actually pick this thing up 
which I wish I had. It's the Gilded Crossbow. And the thing that this scales off of is it gives your Legion hit point bypass. Um, and it is equivalent to your highest buff stack count. Zeta is going to be giving herself a buff stack as a part of her skill here. So, seems pretty good to me. So that, right there, my friends, is in my opinion the best hero investments in the game. That's not to say that the other heroes are bad. Quite the opposite. I've really enjoyed a lot of the other heroes in Call of Dragons, and what you use will depend in part on what you prefer. But if I were guiding someone starting all over again, and they were limited in what, sort of what they could do, I would say that Gorash is a very critical part of whatever sort of infantry you want to run. Ideally, it would, of course, be with Skogel. I would say early on, if you're going for Hosk and you're a bigger spender, just get that lined up and enjoy the benefit of having him in your roster for a very long time. Whether you run him with the Marksman, the Mages, or really any of the troop types in the game, he delivers tremendous value. You get your Lily and Velen up and running at your earliest opportunity. No regrets there whatsoever. Would do that again without hesitation. Even though I'm sure there's some new mages, presumably like right around the corner at the end of this um, generation of heroes, the Gen 3. I'd do it without hesitation. Um, and lastly, Magrat and Zeta. Just delivering absolutely astronomic punishment to your enemies. Pretty much everybody's got to have this thing on the field, right? Like everybody from your alliance. It's just too good. It's this, <laughs> the easiest max in the game, hands down. It's just, it's just that good, all right? If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. I'm definitely due to make some new videos, and I'm sort of hoping we'll get new information, as I've been mentioning here, about mages coming soon. I say mages question mark, but really if we go into our items over here and uh, we scroll on down to... Wherever the universal hero tokens are, uh, we got those over here. If I were to go use one of these, right? We go, hmm, well, G3, what remains? Oh, coming soon, two heroes, <laughs> right? Well, gee, we have infantry, we have marksmen, we have cavalry. So yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be some mages soon, which is pretty hype. And then we move on to Gen 4, and who knows what Gen 4 is going to bring. I mean, it is entirely possible that Magrat and Zeta end up getting replaced. And, you know, look, Sindrian and Fragar are really outstanding. Oh, by the way, here's some dragon tickets, as I was mentioning earlier, and some dragon coins. I do need to kind of top up on those here. Um, but as I was mentioning earlier, right, like Sinfrey didn't make the cut here because they're outclassed by Magze. It is possible that we get new marksmen at the start of Gen 4 and like those knock the socks off of Magze. I don't think that'll be the case, but I do think it's possible we get AoE marksmen just because we're kind of overdue for some AoE on marksmen. Although AoE just might not be a thing that marksmen ever really do in a major way, which I wouldn't be opposed to per se, um, because if you look at Mag Zay, like, yeah, they didn't do AOE, but they absolutely decimated. So, like, what are we complaining about, <laughs> right? Like, what what are we talking about here? They did so good. Enjoy the vid. Throw a like on here. Subscribe to the channel. Looking forward to uh, a new season in the game whenever this happens. Looks like we got uh, some days still till the registration window on the uh, 5th of December. Then matchmaking on the 9th. GG. We had a pretty solid migration into the Blood Fam, um, and that's what happens when, even if you lose, you have a really good fighting season, and people look, and they're like, hey, these guys are putting in a lot of fight. Let's go. Um, we did get some very strange criticism of, like, why aren't they running in like idiots and just running themselves into overwhelm situations where we can beat them easily. Like it was pretty funny to see that complaining, but I'm pretty sure those groups that were complaining ended up having big migrations out. And it's like unsurprising if you're the biggest in the game, you can't be taking easy fights. It's just, it's just been proven in this genre over and over that uh, no fighters stick around in a kingdom that avoids the real fight. All right. Enjoy the vid. Throw a like on here. Subscribe. I wasn't really trying to throw shade. Just trying to speak truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am looking forward to the, uh, the kingdoms in this game. I don't know. How do I want to say this? Learning to take good fights rather than easy wins. They'll figure it out.
Because like people just aren't going to stick around for easy wins. It'll work for a little bit, and then people are going to get bored. When they get bored, they're going to go somewhere else. GG's. Be sure you pick up your passports every week, by the way. <laughs> I'm guilty of forgetting to do this, probably. Have I gotten them? Oh, no, I have been picking them up. Yeah, this is... By the way, this store is pretty legit. Anyways, all right, folks. Until next time, <laughs> you have fun smashing your enemies. Take care, everybody.